Good day, students. Let's start our lecture. Today's topic is dense connective tissue and cartilage. Dense connective tissue, it is one of the subtype of the connective tissue proper, according to the classification of the connective tissues. Uh, it characterized by the uh, distinguished dense, uh, some, it characterized by something which separated from other types of the connective tissues. So, uh, the first that uh, in this type of tissue prevalent uh, extracellular matrix, especially fibers, uh, and concerning a small amount of cells. The cells are mainly major fibroblasts, which has the name fibrocytes. A regular location of histological elements. Next presence of interlayer of loose connective tissue. Uh, we distinguish a fibrose and elastic dense connective tissue. There are two types according to the classification of the dense connective tissue, regular and irregular. In regular dense connective tissue we can see the ordered arrangement of fibers bundles. In irregular type of dense connective tissue we can see a messy arrangement of the bundles of fibers. Uh, like other types of the connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue has the same principles of organization. It consists of cells and extracellular matrix. Cells are fibroblasts and extracellular matrix uh, contains relatively little ground substance and mostly collagen fibers. And uh, on this uh, microslide of the dense regular connective tissue, you can see that oxyphilic bundles, thick bundles of the collagen fibers, orient in various directions. You can see that they form something which looks like waves and uh, lies in different directions. Uh, between these uh, thick bundles of the loose connect of the collagen fibers, we can see the uh, scattered fibroblasts, uh, major fibroblasts, which now has spindle shape and long processes which intervened between the thick bundles of the collagen fibers. Uh, this dense regular connective tissue we can find in the hollow organs, for example, intestinal tract. And uh, here in the intestinal tract it forms the uh, tunica submucosa of the wall, of the stomach, for example, or intestine, or esophagus. And uh, in this tunica mucosa, uh, fibers uh, vary in different directions. You can see the microslide of the tunica submucosa, and here you can see the thick bundles of the collagen fibers, which travel in different, different directions and between them are rare fibroblasts. Now, see another example. It is the skin, the uh, reticular layer of the dermis of the skin. Here we can see the same picture, a morphological picture, after the hematoxylin is in staining. Uh, many other our inner organs also has also capsules, and capsule it is dense, irregular connective tissue. The second class of dense connective tissue, it is dense, regular connective tissue. 
Again, it consists of cells and extracellular matrix. And the total volume of the extracellular matrix prevalent the volume of the cells in 100 times. Cells here are fibroblasts. Extracellular matrix uh, contains relatively little ground substance and mostly collagen fibers. But here fibers are arranged in densely packed parallel arrays of fibers and between them are cells. Usually cells produce these fibers and maintains it panel and uh, uh, packed and aligned between fiber bundles. Uh, and uh, uh, this um, architecture of the dense regular connective tissue we can find in our tendons ligaments and upper nevrosis. This uh, transmission electron microgram uh, show, uh, show us uh, uh, fibroblasts in the dense regular connective tissue. Uh, the sparse cytoplasm of fibroblasts is divided into numerous thin cytoplasmic processes. Now you can see this long thin processes that interdigitate among the collagen fibers. You can see this trans the cross section of many, many, many collagen fibers and between them uh, in penetrate the, the processes of the fibroblasts. Uh, the second uh, scan uh, transmission electron microgram uh, show us the same fibroblast but uh, now they are more elongated and uh, their processes lies between the collagen fibers, bundles of the collagen fibers. If you will look on the cytoplasm of this uh, fibroblast, we can see very well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now it is the tubes and cisterns of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes on the outer surface, a lot of mitochondria in the cytoplasm, and uh, well-developed Golgi apparatus here near the nucleus. That's why here fibroblasts are also uh, protein productive cells which produce the main components of the extracellular matrix. Uh, this picture, light microscopic picture after hematoxylinase staining, uh, show us the tender. Uh, oh, uh, usually collagen fiber stains oxyphilic, it is norm, and forms the bundles of the collagen fibers, and between them cells, uh, elongated cells, which in the tendon has name tendinocytes. And between the bundles we can find, we can see the road of these tendinocytes. Roads of these tendinocytes. And tendon, it is core-like structure that attach muscles to bones. Uh, the cytoplasm of uh, the cytoplasmic sheets that extend from the body of the tendinocytes are not usually evident because they blend within the collagen fibers. That's why we are only on the nucleus. You see, we were nucleus basophilic and very well visible, but cytoplasm is uh, um, blended with the oxyphilic color of collagen fibers. Uh, one more picture of the uh, tendon. Both are hematoxylinazine staining. Uh, tendon is surrounded by the thin connective tissue capsule, which has name epitendineal. 
typically uh, the tendon is subdivided into the fascicles. The first it is fascicle of the first order. Uh, fascicle of the first order it is um, collagen fi fibrils which lies parallel to one another and form the tip uh, bundle of collagen fibers. Between them, between the fascicle of the first order, now it is fascicle of the first order, one, two, three, and so on. Uh, these bundles of the co collagen fibers are separated from one another by the endotendineum. It is intervention of the loose connective tissue which extend from the epitendineum. And cells of tendinocytes locates here in the um, endotendineum, in the loose connective tissue. Then some first order fascicles uh, gather together and form the fascicle of the second order. One, two, three, four fascicles of the first order gather together and we can see the thick plate of the loose connective tissue. Name of this plate is peritendineum. In peritendineum also present tendinocytes and here travel blood and lymph vessels and nerve fibers. Uh, nerve fibers give the innervation and uh, blood and lymph vessels give the blood supply to the tendon. Then fascicles of the second order arrange together and uh, forms the fascicle of the third order. Here we don't see the fascicle of the third order. Here it is one fascicle of the second order. This one more fascicle of the uh, second order. Some of them gather together and form the fascicle of the third order. Usually ten, our tendon it is fascicle of the third order and co is covered by the epitendineal. Epitendineum, it is also crossroad for the blood and lymph vessels and nerve fibers. That's why dense regular and regular connective tissue is highly vascularized. Uh, next type of the dense regular connective tissue or skeletal connective tissue according to the classification. It is cartilage tissue. Uh, this cartilage tissue characterized by, by uh, firmness and res resiliency. The substance of cartilage is not vascularized, uh, vascularized and we can, can't see the blood and lymph vessels and nerve fibers in the cartilage tissue. Uh, that's why cells receive their no nourishment from blood vessels of the surrounding connective tissue by diffusion through the matrix. Uh, like other types of the connective tissue, cartilage consists of cells and extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix is a, uh, usually has fibers and ground substance. Like in other types of connective tissue, extracellular matrix predominates and determines the mechanical properties of the cartilage. And it is usually that uh, components of the extracellular matrix provide the main properties of the concrete type of the connective tissue. Uh, now in cartilage tissue we can see the collagen fibers type 2 
it is the main collagen in the matrix of cartilage. Uh, also, um, ground substance is firm and gel-like. Com it composed of uh, glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans, which are intimely associated with the collagen and elastic fibers embedded in the matrix. In the cartilage tissue, cells, all cells belong to same deferon, and this deferon start from the mesenchymal cell. Last lecture we discussed that all types of the connective tissue develops from the mesenchyme. For cartilage it is also true. Uh, population of the cartilage deferon which associated with the cartilage, start from the chondrogenic cells, then next chondroblasts and chondrocytes. Chondrogenic cells are spindle-shaped narrow cells that derived from directly from the mesenchymal cells. This they possess an avoid nucleus. And uh, in the cytoplasm, uh, on the, in, under the electron microscope, uh, we can see um, a small amount of Golgi apparatus, few mitochondria, uh, some profiles of rough endoplasmic reticulum are not very well developed, and uh, free ribosomes also not numerous. Uh, the, these cells can divide mitotically and differentiate into the chondroblast cells. Chondrogenic cells, it is reserve of the uh, cells of the cartilage. Uh, now about the development of the cartilage and its growth. Sensitium of the mesenchymal cells uh, develops into the fibroblasts, but uh, these cells manufacture a dense irregular connective tissue, first of all, which has the name perichondrium. Perichondrium maintains the uh, shape of the cartilage. A perichondrium, which covers most of the cartilages, has two layers. Outer fibrous layer, which is composed of type 1 collagen, fibroblasts and blood vessels. Also here present uh, nerve fibers. The second layer, innermost layer of the perichondrium, it is the con uh, cellular layer. In a layer, it is cellular layer. And here in the cellular layer uh, locates the chondrogenic cells and chondroblasts. Here, chondrogenic cells divide mitotically and undergo differentiation into the chondroblasts. And uh, chondroblasts are the main cells which can uh, produce the matrix, extracellular ma matrix of the cartilage tissue. That's why uh, chondroblasts present during the old lifespan of the person and uh, possess the oppositional growth. Uh, Chondroblasts produce new portions of the extracellular matrix, can differentiate into the chondrocytes, and add uh, the new portions of the cartilage on its periphery. It is, it is a positional growth. Uh, 
cartilage tissue also has another type of cell, chondroblasts. Uh, chondroblasts has two way, uh, ways of development. First, from the mesenchymal cell directly, but it is only the fetus development during the fetal period. In postnatal life, only from the chondrogenic cells. Chondroblasts are plump basophilic cells that display the organelles required for protein synthesis. Now, all components of the extracellular matrix it is mostly proteins, collagen, elastin, uh, proteoglycans, glycoproteins. All these groups are proteins and uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum of the chondroblasts is responsible for the synthesis and expelling of these proteins. Uh, that's why chondroblasts are very rich in rough endoplasmic reticulum, very well developed Golgi complex, numerous mitochondria, and ab abundance of secretory vesicles. Uh, next cell, more differentiated cell, which uh, de uh, develops from chondroblasts, are chondrocytes. Uh, chondrocytes uh, are cells who can't produce a lot of extracellular matrix and uh, uh, usually uh, lies in special cavities, lacunes, and are, surround, are surrounded by the matrix. In these cells in chondrocytes uh, are, is one large nucleus with nucleolus and has a, a usual organelles of protein secreting cells. But these organelles are not very well developed. We distinguish young chondrocytes and older co chondrocytes. Young chondrocytes are pale staining, has many mitochondria, rough endoplasmic reticulum, very well developed Golgi apparatus and glycogen. Older chondrocytes are relatively quiescent, display a greatly reduced complement of organelles and abundance of free ribosomes. The, these cells resume active protein synthesis if they reverted to chondroblasts. Very interesting ability of chondrocytes that in some conditions when it is necessary they can revert back to the chondroblasts, but it is only in special condition. Uh, it is transmission electron microgram of the chondrocytes. We can see that chondrocyte is oval shaped cell with the large nucleus, oval shaped usually or sometimes round. Uh, these cells locate in special cavities. You can see the name of this cavity. If it is single cell in this cavity, it is lacun. And very well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum is, is visible. Ra uh, Golgi apparatus here, a lot of mitochondria. Uh, around uh, you can see the uh, sections of the collagen fibers a longitudinal section and this is transversal section. It is component of the matrix of the cartilage. Uh, development of the cartilage is, is very interesting. Uh, no, I told that uh, the main uh, precursor of the cartilage are mesenchymal cells which forms the syncytium. 
uh, when cartilage start to develop uh, we can see the aggregation of the mesenchymal cells uh, cells uh, lost their contact with one another retract their processes change its shape from the stellate into round and uh, uh, together they form the mass which has name chondrification center chondrification center uh, next step this now round shaped cells differentiates into the chondroblasts get all the features of the chondroblasts and to, to start to produce the extracellular matrix Sec produce secrete and uh, around themselves and uh, uh, around the cells stay very um, small free space which we call lacun on the more distance from the cell uh, concentrates the matrix and this individual compartment around the cell stay for all the future life of the cartilage uh, when chondroblasts cover themselves by the matrix uh, locates in the lacoon they differentiate into the chondrocytes uh, in the fetal period we talk now about the fetal period these cells the chondrocytes are still capable of cell division and form a cluster of two to four or more cells in the lacoon. These groups are known as isogenous groups. Then, step by step, uh, the, these isogenic groups manufacture matrix uh, and they are pushed away from one another forming separate lacoon and they thus enlarge the cartilage from the vi vi within. This type of growth is called interstitial growth. This interstitial growth may be only in the petal period in the early phase of cartilage formation. Uh, this is the scheme which step by step show the process of the formation of the cartilage. So first you can see stellate mesenchymal cells which form in situ. The, the, then these cells aggregate, lose its processes, become round shaped with the nucleus in the center. Then these cells start to produce the extracellular matrix you see and fill the spaces between themselves uh, around the black line around the chondroblasts stay the free space lacun uh, inside the lacoon, cells divide methodically, differentiates into the chondrocytes and appear as a genic group when in one lacoon present several cells, two and more cells. Then each of these cells continue to produce extracellular matrix and separates from one another by its own lacoons. And the uh, size of the cartilage increase. This type of the growth we call the interstitial growth. Uh, and this type of growth 
present only in the fetus, in prenatal life, when this cartilage formation, initial cartilage formation, start and continue. Only in one place of, in our body, this interstitial growth lasts in the postnatal life. Uh, this, this is the picture of the uh, epiphyseal plate, second name metaepiphyseal plate. It locates between the epiphysis and diaphysis of the long bone. Uh, the development of the long bones is very complex. Next lecture we will discuss it. Uh, and uh, between the diaphysis and epiphysis, up to the puberty, children and babies has the intervention of the helene cartilage. It gets the name uh, epiphysal plate. And here you can see the um, longitudinal oriented parallel of the lacoons. You see many, many lacoons with chondra blasts, uh, which continue the interstitial growth. On the periphery of this plate takes place the suffocation. And this is the way of the growth of the long bones. This metaepiphyseal plate helps the long bones elongate, and that's why the baby grow. After the puberty, this metaepiphyseal plate replaced by the bone tissue and the interstitial growth of the helene cartilage stops. That's why only in one place of our body, in postnatal life, during the first, you know, up to the 20 years in boys, in girls earlier, present this earlier, um, replaced, this plate replaced by the bone tissue, uh, takes place the interstitial growth. Then, in after puberty, interstitial growth absent everywhere. Uh, that's why uh, here you see the uh, steps of the cartilage formation. Uh, it passes the following stages. First, precartilaginous tissue, uh, then initial cartilage tissue, described by the appearance of the extracellular substance, unmatched cartilage and in intercellular substance occur chondromucoid, it is matrix, and chondroitin acid, alongside with young oxyphilic field arised by the phyllis. Then matured cartilage, the most age fields of it which stains oxyphilic. Major cartilage uh, present in postnatal life of the person when cartilage has its normal architecture, uh, which we discussed earlier. Then, very pity, but uh, with the aging of the person, the next phase of cartilage histogenesis takes place. It gets, gets the name the asbestic dystrophia. Asbestic dystrophia uh, happened because of um, difficult blood supply, difficult nutrition of the cartilage. In the central part of the intercellular space in the cartilage, uh, resulting in the atrophy of this part without blood vessels, appear the uh, so-called suffocation regions. Appear calcium carbonates, which looks like small bones, and 
this process can increase and uh, uh, it is based for arthrosis. Uh, many persons in their old age suffer from the pains in the articles, for example. It is because of asbestos dystrophia and it is the native for cartilages, for cartilage tissue. Now you see the place where this asbestos dystrophia start asbestos dystrophia start first. Now you see the section of the article surfaces of the bones. One bone, second one. And the article surface of the bone is covered by the article cartilage. This is pale staining. It is article cartilage, uh, now hyaline cartilage. This hyaline cartilage has perichondrium only from one side. You see, only from the side from the bone. And nutrition of the cartilage takes place across the perichondrium from the blood vessels of the bone. But article surface uh, lack perichondrium. That's why nutrition takes place only from the synovial fluid in the cavity of the article. And here, as best in this brief here, appear first. Uh, it is so called the ossification of the cartilage. Uh, here appear the uh, small bones calcium carbonates, crystals, and uh, this cartilage with a very smooth surface uh, replaced by the bone tissue. And it is very painful because bone is not smooth and when this, the person with such changes moves, he or she feels a strong pain. And uh, today we understand that it is native process and we don't know how to stop it at all. Uh, so, cartilage tissue, which I explained you earlier, forms three types of cartilages like organ. Cartilage tissue or cartilage tissue forms three types of cartilages. And these cartilages, we think that it is organs cartilage, same name. There are three types of cartilages like organ. First, it is most, uh, most common type, it is hyaline cartilage. Uh, in fetus, this hyaline cartilage forms the model of the long bones. That's why it is very scattered cartilage in our body. So it, it is it present in fetus and in adults. Uh, in fresh condition, without staining histologic technique, this uh, cartilage is tra translucent yellowish-blue and uh, film and has jelly-like consistence. Uh, where we can find these cartilages? In fetus, it forms the model of the long bones. But in adult person, it forms the costal ribs, costal portion of the ribs, most of the laryngeal cartilages, it is hyaline cartilage. Uh, the cartilages rings which support the trachea and uh, forms the irregular plates in the wall of the bronchi. Also epiphyseal plate and covers the article surfaces of our bones. 
all our articles has this Helen cartilage on the article surface of the bone. Uh, Helen cartilage has the refractive index of the collagen fibrils and ground substance near one same or near one another. The refraction of the collagen fibers and ground substance is near one another. That's why uh, the helene cartilage matrix appears an amorphous, homogeneous mass under the light microscope. But organization of the helene cartilage is the same like the other types of the, of the cartilages and consists of cartilage tissue. Cartilage tissue, as you know, has cells and extracellular matrix. Matrix of helene cartilage uh, con contains type 2 collagen but also maybe types 9, 10, and 11, but in small frequency, fr uh, quantities, very frequent and in small quantities. Uh, chondrocytes are embedded in the matrix and may be single and lies in the lacun, or form the isogenous groups. In one isogenous group, maybe two to eight cells derived from one parent cell. Uh, it is the picture scheme of the helene cartilage. Now you see the perichondrium, which consist of the fibrous layer, outer fibrous layer, here present fibroblasts and collagen fibers. Then cellular layer, in the cellular layer present uh, chondrogenous cells and chondroblasts. Now it is chondroblasts, chondrogenous cells absent on this here. And then matrix. Here it is matrix. This part of the scheme it is matrix. We can see the chondrocytes, chondrocytes in the lacunes and around uh, matrix. In the matrix is fibers, collagen fibers type 2, which embedded into the matrix into the uh, ground substance. Uh, in the matrix, we distinguish two types of matrix. Matrix which around the cell, it is territorial matrix. Uh, it, uh, this matrix is poor in cells, sorry, in fibers, and uh, interterritorial matrix, which is very rich in collagen fibers. Uh, it is uh, helene cartridge uh, on the microslide, which stained by hematoxylin acid. You can see the. It is real microslide. It is the perichondrium. You can see the dense, regular, irregular connective tissue with the fibroblasts and bundles of the collagen fibers. Uh, fibrocyte with fibroblasts here. Then uh, cellular layer with chondroblasts. This is chondroblasts and chondrogenic cells. And then matrix, cut, major cartilage with the isogenic groups 
isogeny groups you see two cells isogeny groups two cells and locums also present around is extra is ground substance uh, in territorial matrix around the each lacoon or isogeny group and interterritorial matrix which is rich in collagen fibers. A territorial matrix uh, is poor in collagen fibers but rich in chondritin sulfate and which gives the basophilic color to this territorial matrix. You can see it. Basophilic color to the matrix. Ground substance in the helium cartilage uh, has following predominant components. No, of course, it is glycosaminoglycans, GAX. Uh, but here, if in loose connective tissue, here in loose connective tissue prevalent hyaluronic acid, non-sulfated GAG, here prevalent sulfated GAGs like chondroitin sulfate A and C, and also maybe some hyaluronone. Minor Gags are keratin sulfate and heparan sulfate. Proteoglycans, it is large molecule with the core protein in the center. And uh, to this core protein, uh, co covalently bind the gags, chains of the gags. This huge, very large molecule also present in the ground substance of the helium cartilage. Pro maybe proteoglycan aggregates. It get name agricans. Agricans. Uh, link proteins uh, uh, connects the proteoglycans in long chains. Also tissue fluid, like ultrafiltrate of blood plasma, uh, also present in hyaline cartilage matrix. Uh, hyaline cartilage, I repeat once more, is surrounded and nourished by perichondrium from both sides. Only articular cartilage is nourished by the synovial fluid in the joint cavities. Uh, next type of cartilage is elastic cartilage. Uh, elastic cartilage is yellow in fresh condition and is more flexible than hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage in humans occur in external ear, external auditory canal, and auricular, auric, auditory tube. Epiglottis, the cartilage of the larynx, cuneiform cartilage of the larynx, and comiculate cartilage of the larynx. Elastic cartilage provides flexible support to the ears, external ear to the larynx. Also some cartilages of the nose is also elastic. Most of them are hyaline, but some of portions it is elastic cartilage. Uh, this is the um, light microscopic picture of the elastic cartilage. This is smaller magnification, this part large magnification. Uh, 
As you see, this cartilage is also co covered by the perichondrium. Here you see perichondrium with the two layers, same like in hyaline cartilage, fibrous layer outer and inner cellular layer. Uh, but this cartilage needs special staining. Elastic fibers don't stain by the hematoxylin azine and need the special staining by orsein. Now they appear as brown, brown uh, or red brown. You see elastic fibers, elastic fibers in the matrix. Also may be stained by the vagert, stained by the vagert. Uh, the main type of the fibers in the elastic cartilage is the elastic fiber, but also may be collagen type 2 fibers. Uh, elastic fibers uh, forms the network, and this network is densest at the core of the cartilage mass. Uh, cells in this cartilage, chondrocytes, you can see, also can form isogenic groups or lacuns with single cell. But isogenic groups in, hell is in elastic cartilage is smaller than in hyaline cartilage and we can't find more than two chondrocytes in one isogenic group. You can see that this isogenic group can form the rows, which is perpendicular to the perichondrium. And between these isogenic groups, elastic fibers are very well visible. If in hyaline cartilage, the fibers in the matrix absent, present, but we can't see them after hematoxylinazine staining. Now in elastic cartilage, after they are seen staining or staining by Weger, these fibers are very well visible. Uh, the next type of cartilage it is fibro cartilage. Uh, fibro cartilage is very interesting cartilage. Uh, it have no perichondrium at all, and uh, uh, matrix possess type one collagen. Type one. Fibro cartilage present in special places like intervertebral discs, in the pubic symphysis, in art articular discs, and uh, uh, in the place where the tendons are attached to the bone. Uh, Fibro cartilage is also always associated with dense connective tissue, and the border between these two is distinct. Its, its combination of cartilages, ground substance, and dense collagen bundles allow fibro cartilage to resist the formation under great stress. No perichondrium, but fibro cartilage uh, display a scant amount of matrix. Matrix is very rich in chondritin sulfate and dermatin sulfate. Fibers are visible in the matrix. 
type 1 collagen fibers are visible and stained acidophilic. Uh, but in some regions, like uh, this fiber cartilage, like the hyaline cartilage, has type 2 collagen. There are no any isogenic groups in the fibro cartilage. And uh, uh, chondrocytes f uh, lies in lacoons by single cell in each lacoon. And uh, uh, between these lacoons we can see the densely packed type 1 collagen bundles. When strong mechanical stress occurs, fibrocartilage develops from dense regular connective tissue through the transformation of fibroblasts to fibroblast-like precursors into chondrocytes. Fibrocartilage growth has not been closely examined. Uh, it is picture of the uh, fibro cartilage. Uh, it is this section is stained by hematoxylin and eosin. Matrix is very rich in uh, chondroitin sulfate and dermatan sulfate and dermatan sulfate. Uh, you can see that lacoons with chondrocytes are distributed in columnar isogenic groups between the densely packed type 1 collagen bundles. You see the rows of rows of isogenic groups. And if you will remember the if you remember the uh, tendon. We can see, you can see the picture which looks like tendon. Same roads of, of bond, uh, fascicles of the first order looks like in fibro cartilage. We can see something which looks like fascicles of the first order, which separates from one another by the tendinocytes and endotendineum. Then together fascicles of the second order with the thick plate of the loose connective tissue uh, peritendineum. And then together fascicle of the third order. But here it is not tendon. Instead of the collagen fibers, bundles of the collagen fibers, here we can see matrix. This is matrix, not collagen fiber. Matrix which consists of chondritin sulfate and dermatan sulfate. And collagen type 1, collagen fibers type 1, are embedded in this matrix with GAGs, proteoglycans, and glycoproteins. And uh, very interesting that in places where the strong mechanical stress occur, fibrocartilage develops from dense regular connective tissue through the transformation of fibroblasts or fibroblast-like cells into chondrocytes. So interesting cartilage and its nature and function today is not fully understood. So, doctors, uh, our time is over. Thanks for your attention. And lecture is over.